Hello and welcome to episode 2 of In-Depth PC Building Guide. In this episode we will be installing the motherboard. So here it is and I will just get the camera in closer and here we are uh, looking at the motherboard and my case. Uh, we will be installing the motherboard into the case but first there are a few things we need to do. Uh, like last time with the Corsair power supply we need to remove all stickers or we can remove them later as well if we want to but just remember if you have any stickers with serial number or anything else on the motherboard do not remove that because it can void your warranty and another thing is that you might need to install a backplate and I pre-installed my backplate here you can see the screws are in there all from the top and you have the back plate here. So, and when you're handling your motherboard, hold it from the edges and try to keep it on, on top of something. I have this plastic part which came with the motherboard and usually all motherboards have some sort of a plastic uh, cover and I would keep my motherboard on that before installing. Okay, so let's ho let's start installing. So the firstly, we will have the install our I/O shield, which is the input-output shield with your um, connections for video. Uh, if you have onboard video, as well as audio, USB, and everything. So let's just take this out of the bag. As you can see, here is the I/O shield, and take make sure that you put it on the right way. So, in this case, this side of the I.O. shield goes out. And we just push it in. There is a hole at the back. And we just push it into that hole. Sometimes you might need to add some pressure, but it's very unlikely that you need to add too much pressure. There we go. The I.O. shield is in place and we will now install the screws for the motherboard. So now we will be installing the brass suspenders on the PC case for the motherboard so that it doesn't short the circuit. And remember this is extremely important. It is the most important thing you can do while installing your motherboard. And some of the uh, cases have standard ATX uh, brass things placed already and this one only has two over here so we need to place the other ones as well and you need to look at the holes in your motherboard you have the small holes here around the motherboard to see how it will line up and after you know where you're gonna put the uh, brass suspenders uh, you're just gonna install them by putting them down here and rolling them around uh, the mounting and that's done and now you will just have to repeat that for everything and my PC case has letters for each hole uh, which they are and it actually has a nice diagram here and it says that ATX needs to line up A, B, C, D, E, F, J, K and L and I have an ATX motherboard the holes are ATX, but uh, it is still bigger than ATX motherboard. But So I will be installing uh, those, and stay tuned. And here I am, just installing the last three suspenders in the case. Remember, you do not need any tools for this, and you don't need to apply any force. Uh, just do this with your bare hands, and they, they will just go in by themselves. All, just make sure that they go all the way to the bottom of the holes because they need to be flat out with the other ones. So once you have installed all your br uh, brass stands, uh, you will take your motherboard carefully and you will place it on top of the stands. So if you have any cables laying around, you just want to make sure that they're uh, away and uh, not on the, under the motherboard and then once you have your motherboard you just put 
push it on top of the mounting stands and make sure it's lined up with the IO shield and then you just carefully push it so that it's facing the IO shield do not apply any pressure and avoid any scratching to the bottom because the stands are at the bottom obviously and those can cause scratching um, if you just push this around and here I actually forgot one ASUS sticker uh, it's like this thicker cover not the actual sticker make sure nothing melts and now we will just screw everything in so I will just like to start with the top corner hole here and uh, just take another screw out of the screws that came with your PC case uh, they should be the small flatter ones uh, so just make sure that you have the right screws I mean you can use any screw but it's better that you use the smaller ones and here we have the screw and then the screwdriver I use a magnetized screwdriver I haven't had any problems with that but some people might recommend you to not use magnetized screwdrivers but personally I prefer the magnetized screwdriver because uh, it's easy to place the screws onto the motherboard especially if you're placing them after you have installed other stuff like graphics cards and etc. Uh, well the graphic cards you always remove them when you take out your motherboard but let's say you have a cooler for your CPU you might not remove that when you remove your motherboard. So you just repeat this step for each hole on the motherboard and I have nine holes on mine because it's the standard ATX holes. And remember this is extremely important never over tighten the screws. Uh, you, you just uh, screw them in enough so that they make contact with the motherboard but never over tighten them. Once they make contact with the motherboard uh, just don't over tighten them because that might ruin your motherboard and break everything. So remember that. So now comes one of the most uh, annoying parts when installing a motherboard. You will have to install the hard drive uh, LED and the power switch and power uh, reset switch buttons and because they are in your case these these cables are coming from my case and they will plug into the motherboard and I actually have one of these uh, where you can plug the cables in and after that plug them into the motherboard over there but you can plug them in directly to the motherboard but it's considerably easier to plug them in to this little converter piece because then you have everything plugged in and then you can just do one plug into the motherboard and it's done and I'll show you what it looks like and there's really no way uh, to teach this because every motherboard usually has their own thing uh, so you will have to read the instruction manual And now, as you can see, I plugged in all the cables and this uh, small adapter thing. And you might have this or you might not, but you can always plug it directly into your motherboard. And uh, even the, the, these small black things, even without this adapter, you can plug them in. But since I have one of these adapters, I can just plug it in there. Just make sure all the pins are lined up and then you just plug it into the motherboard. I'm actually not going to keep it there. I'm going to uh, do some cable management and then add it later. So, And as you can see, my PC case actually came with a whole bunch of cables. They have different kind of jacks for audio, uh, etc. And you just plug these audio jacks onto the PC, uh, I mean the motherboard and once you plugged all the stuff into the motherboard it's just done. You should do some cable management especially if you have a side panel window or to avoid them uh, hitting any fans but once you, uh, but again this is something you have to check in the manual which uh, port is where and where it has to go. Some of these items are actually labeled uh, on the motherboard so it will be really easy but let's say this SATA port I just plug it in over here 
and the SATA connection port over there. So I would just plug that SATA cable there. But I will do some cable management now and be back later. So I've done a lot of work um, getting the cables managed in this case and now I will be adding the um, power line into the power supply for the CPU. The CPU has not been installed yet but you can install the power supply now if you like to. So first you just if you have a modular power cable you just add this side with the only AX1200 watt into the uh, power supply and once you've done that you just add this part over here at the top and it might have a cap on the it's it's supposed to be 8 pin and especially if you're hunting, running a high end motherboard you will have to use the 8 pin because it will need that extra power and you just remove the cap and I have no idea where it flew okay there uh, you just remove the cap there some kind of a cap and now you can just plug this end of the modular power supply with a CPU mark on it into the CPU bracket and I'm gonna be doing well let's see actually yeah this will fit uh, just fine uh, I don't need an extension cable to get it over here and because the graphics cards usually have slots so you can pull the cable there but I could also line it up through here make it come back up there and then link it up there but I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do and now we are going to install the motherboard power and it's this 24 pin power connector some might have less pins and I think there are 20 pins yeah you have 20 pin connectors and again you just plug this into the power supply there and are these connectable together no they're not but you just plug them into the power supply and obviously people are gonna have different power supplies and uh, if you have a modular power supply the connections are probably gonna be different and if you have a, a non-modular power supply you're not gonna have to plug anything into the power supply at all but then you have all the cables tangled up in one space and there both the cables parts have been plugged into the power supply firmly remember to press down on them to make sure that they are actually on and now you can plug in the power uh, supply cable over here but I'm actually gonna reroute it down here and make it come up here so uh, I will again save with cable management I'm gonna show you that later So here we are again, and I'm just going to show you quickly what I'm going to do with the power supply. Uh, so uh, I have this cable right up there, and that will work out work its way later on with the cable management. But this one will go down through the hole next to the power supply, and over there. And I will bring it back up through these vents at the top. And as you can see, it comes out very nicely. And then you just plug it in. Like so. And make sure it's connected properly. And then you can push this wire back so it looks even better. Now it's as if it's not even there. And that's it for installing a motherboard and all its cables. And now this is the end of episode 2. And we will move on to installing the CPU in our next episode. Thank you for watching.